Welcome to lesson four in our fables unit. Today we are going to be talking about characters in fables and the different types of characters and character traits that we can see in characters. So when we think about characters in fables, there are usually two types of characters in a story. There's usually the good guy and the bad guy. And when we think about in a fable, a lot of times there can be a character that displays a positive character trait. Usually one of the characters displays a character trait that's positive, that's good, and this character trait is seen through their words and actions. So if we think about the character Poe from Kung Fu Panda, he was really friendly and compassionate and looked out for other people and always tried to do his best. If we think about Olaf from Frozen, he's a pretty optimistic guy who looks at the bright side of things and who's very loyal to Anna and Elsa. In a fable, authors can also use personification to reveal problems in people and society in order to teach us a lesson. The problem or conflict in a fable usually comes from the actions of a character whose character traits are bad. A foible is a negative character trait in a fable. In fables, the bad character has a foible. For example, in Kung Fu Panda, Tai Lung's foible is pride or arrogance. He thought he was better than everyone and that he should be chosen as the dragon warrior, which caused the war, which is the problem. If you think about Scar from The Lion King, he was very power hungry and he was also a liar and tricked Simba into having his father die. Now, today I'm going to read Picture Day from the Fabled Fourth Graders, and we're going to see if we can match our characters with their foibles or with their positive trait. So as I read, think about which of these three characters, Rose, Mr. Jupiter, and the class, matches the character traits bossy, too timid, or kind. Picture Day. Rose Clarendorf had overslept again. Hurry, hurry, her mother cried. Rose snatched yesterday's clothes off the floor and flung them on. She raced downstairs and, grabbing her backpack and a cold toaster tart, raced out the door. She didn't even take time to brush her teeth or pee or run a comb through her tangled hair. Minutes later, she screeched into the classroom and... Rose shook her head. Why did everyone look so weird? Ashley A. was wearing a ruffled skirt and pantyhose. Ashley B. was wearing a shimmery green party dress. And Ashley Z was wearing dress pants and a collared shirt. And his shirt was tucked in! The truth hit Rose like a ton of social studies books. Oh no, she gasped. It's picture day! Victoria walked over to Rose and smirked. You obviously forgot. Victoria had dressed for picture day as if it were her wedding day. Her long blonde hair had been swept up into a swirling mass of curls and hairpins. She was wearing a white velvet dress, white lace tights, and nice pearl collar, snickered Lenny. It looks like something my grandmother would wear, added Bruce. Or my basset hound, put in Emberly. Humph, snorted Victoria. Boys don't know anything about fashion, and she flounced away. Any other day, Rose wouldn't have cared what Victoria thought. She wouldn't have worried about her clothes or her hair. But today was different. Today was picture day. Rose looked down at her wrinkled pink jeans and rumpled yellow t-shirt, which read, My grandmother went to Borneo and all I got was this t-shirt. Tears pricked her eyes. Her best friend, Missy, tried to cheer her up. I have some extra barrettes in my desk, she said. We can at least fix your hair. Rose hesitated. Barrettes? She never wore barrettes. It just wasn't her style. No, thank you. I, I, she began, but Missy cut her off. Do you want to look special on picture day or not? Rose nodded. Then come on, said Missy. She pulled Rose into a corner of the room right next to Mr. Jupiter's suit of armor. Found while exploring the underground temple of the Knights Templar, he had explained, and began pinning plastic butterflies all over Rose's head. At that moment, Amisha walked over. You know, you need earrings, too, she said, and she clipped a dangly pair onto Rose's earlobes. Earrings? Rose never wore earrings. They weren't her style, either. Besides, they pinched. I'd rather go without jewelry, said Rose. No jewelry on picture day? gasped Misha. 
She jangled her gold bracelets. You wouldn't look special enough. Before Rose could even reply, Victoria pushed her way into the corner. You, girl, need some color, she proclaimed. Whipping out a tube of cha-ching cherry lip gloss, she aimed it at Rose's mouth and said, Pucker up! I don't know if this is such a good idea, said Rose. I've never worn makeup before. <laughs> That's obvious, replied Victoria. Still, you want to look special on picture day, don't you? Rose nodded. Victoria smeared a thick pink streak across Rose's mouth, then touched up her own shimmering lips. Now we both look special. Rose longed to wipe away the sticky mess, but before she could grab a tissue, Emberly slipped a pair of rhinestone sunglasses over her eyes. Now that looks special, he declared. Then Jackie draped a basketball jersey over her shoulders. Really special, she declared. And Ham tied a bow tie around her neck. Really, really special, he declared. I don't know, began Rose, but her classmates paid no attention to her. They were too busy adding knee pads, a nose ring, tube socks, snow boots, press-on fingernails, a cowboy hat, a charm bracelet, temporary tattoos, a sequined belt, a silk scarf, and a plastic Hawaiian lei. At last, they stepped back to admire their work. What do you think? They asked Rose. They all turned her around so she could see herself in the reflection of the suit of armor's shiny breastplate. Rose gasped. None of it, not the tattoos or the boots or the nose ring, was even her style. She looked so, so special, sighed Missy. The others nodded their agreement. Rose looked from her ridiculous reflection to her smiling classmates. How could she tell them she thought she looked stupid? She couldn't. At that moment, Mr. Jupiter dressed for the occasion in a Mayan ceremonial robe, a gift from the President of Mexico, he had explained, clapped his hands. Line up, please. It's time for pictures. Everyone hurried to the door. Miserably, Rose followed along. In the lunchroom, Miss Turner was already in front of the camera. Say cheese, said the photographer. Victoria smiled. Pinching her cheeks and biting her lips to make them redder, she smiled a dazzling smile. Flash! Emberly grinned from ear to ear. Flash! Lenny stuck out his tongue. Flash! Finally, Rose stepped gloomily in front of the camera. Smile, said the photographer. How can I? She sighed. Look what I'm wearing. The photographer shrugged. Flash. Rose couldn't smile for the class photo either. As she knelt in the front row, earrings pinching, tube socks falling down, she crossed her fingers. Please, oh please let the camera break. Let the photographer accidentally cover the lens with his thumb. Let the photography studio lose the pictures. Three weeks later, Mr. Jupiter announced. Wonderful news, children! Your pictures are here! He began handing out envelopes. Victoria ripped hers open. Oh, lovely as usual, she purred. I look good, too, said Bernadette. Boy, I'm handsome, said Melvin. The others ignored him. As for Rose, she held the envelope in her trembling hand. She couldn't even bring herself to open it. Yowza! yelped Humphrey. Look at the class picture! Look at Rose! Everyone but Rose pulled their class picture out of the envelope. She braced herself. Man, your hair looks like a bee's nest, snickered Ham. Like a butterfly's nest, actually, corrected Stanford. What's with the knee pads, giggled Amisha. And the bow tie, tittered Lil. Then Mr. Jupiter shouted, Stop! Everyone looked toward the teacher. I can't believe it, he cried as he peered at the class picture. How could this have happened? How? It simply will not do. What won't do? asked Bernadette. Rose's tattoo? My outfit, explained Mr. Jupiter. Don't you see? I wore a Mayan ceremonial robe without holding the matching canary head scepter. He slapped his forehead. In the travel world, it's a complete fashion no-no. Well, there's nothing else to do. We'll have to retake the class photo. We will? said Rose hopefully. Absolutely, replied Mr. Jupiter. Rose smiled with relief. 
Want to borrow my butterfly barrettes again? asked Missy. No, thanks, said Rose, and she smiled at her ordinary, everyday reflection in the breastplate of Mr. Jupiter's suit of armor. The moral of the story is, try to please all, and you end by pleasing none. So, in this fable, if we think about our characters, we have Rose, Mr. Jupiter, and the rest of the class. And in this case, we know that the problem arose because Rose came to school late and she had been wearing her clothes from yesterday. So she wasn't looking that great for picture day. And all of the other students told her what she should wear and ended up dressing her up in all sorts of crazy things and she ended up looking really nuts for the class picture. So in our story, we look at our options and Rose was definitely too timid to stand up for herself and tell the other students that she didn't like what they were trying to make her wear. So Rose's foible in this fable is that she is too timid. Now, we also talked about the class. The class was being either kind or bossy. And in this case, we know that they were being really bossy and telling Rose what she should wear, even though she ended up looking really crazy. Now, to end our story, Mr. Jupiter came to Rose's rescue. He made up some excuse that he was wearing the wrong thing for the class picture so that it would have to be retaken, and he said that because he was being kind and helping Rose because he knew that she didn't like how she looked in the picture. So Mr. Jupiter, in this case, was kind. So when we think about characters in a fable, we can have characters that have positive traits, or we can have characters that have negative traits, and in fables, a negative trait is called a foible. As you're reading your fables today and doing your exit card, make sure you think about what types of character traits your characters have.